how you getting over being on double digits. Kansas is a really weird team. I mean, they're a four, four game losing streak. Each of those losses, they lead in the fourth quarter. They don't look like a team that's really struggling that much. Expect you, expect you to look at the yeah, they're the, the same team that was predicted to potentially win the league to start the season. Uh, and, you know, the end of the, they've had two first half, end of the first halves where they've turned the football over and the opponent has gotten seven points through essentially in the first half, which is the difference in uh, two of their games, Illinois and UNLV. Uh, you know, they had the wheel route at the end, right? And then last week, you know, first play of the fourth quarter, they have a guy open. Should be a walk-off touchdown uh, to tie the game in the fourth quarter. So they've had the lead in every game, but the last game going into the fourth quarter, they were down four. And uh, the first play of that quarter, uh, they could have easily scored uh, to take in the lead in that game. So this is a really good football team. Uh, they've turned the ball over a lot, and really that's the only statistic that's much different than last year for them is turnover margin. And it's amazing what turnover margin does. Hey, Coach, just quickly, <coughs> <laughs> uh, Chris, Chris Carvin, so no source. Kenny, you talked about self scouting during the bye week. Um, also, maybe said that you could have had too much into your game plan for Texas Tech. So, after doing all this review, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think we have to get back to what we're good at. Um, we did that throughout the game, but I think we chased just too many ghosts. You know, the Texas State game. Uh, I think got us to chase, to chase to just too many ghosts in terms of trying to make every play perfect and not maximally saying, hey, we're going to take a 6% risk here that if they call this pressure, it's going to be a TFL. And I think we, we kind of scared our guys into playing passive, uh, and that starts with me. So we got to get our guys playing more aggressive uh, on the O-line and D-line again and not as passive. That's kind of what I took away from it. Yeah, uh, most of our guys are back. Uh, Cole's out. Uh, other than that, the guys that everybody would ask about up to this point. Uh, yeah, the guys that would be in the depth uh, should all be back. Hey, Coach, quickly, how was the bye week? What did you get accomplished? What do you feel you got done in that last week? Yeah, I thought it was good. I think, uh, you know, trying to, you know, break up the monotony of a long season and a long camp. Uh, that kind of gets going, and I felt that a little bit, you know, at the end of, you know, uh, two weeks ago and stuff like that. So trying to break up the monotony, have a little fun, a little bit of, of break up there, and then kind of go back to kind of what we want to be this next three-game stretch. You know, with the different bye weeks, you really get an opportunity to have an identity to start the season, kind of tweak and self-scout yourself for three games, and then do that again to really give people different pictures and make it kind of, uh, three seasons, four weeks, three weeks, five weeks from a schematic standpoint in terms of some tendencies. So looking to do that. Uh, but I thought it was a, I thought it was a productive bye week. Like I told the guys today, uh, we got to get back to, to playing the game really hard. You know, we didn't play the game very hard. Uh, not as hard as, as we had in weeks one and two. And uh, the more I watched it on tape, the more, uh, the more you see it. And we got to get back to playing the game really, really hard. And it's a simple game if you play it really hard. We've got to get back to that being a strength, not just a tie for us. That's got to be an advantage. Hey, Coach Fletcher Anderson, Crockett News. Uh, Sam Levitt had the most passing yards in a game he's had this season. Um, how do you kind of build on that, and what did you work on specifically with him during the line? Yeah, we just sometimes he gets elongated in his base and he lunges forward. You know, he's a hop thrower, which means he likes to hop to get into rhythm, and sometimes when you do that, you're off balance a little bit. So we just worked on making sure he's not hopping and lunging some of those throws. And then we really just kind of toned in on protections more and more and more and understanding where you're hot and taking the hots and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, Sam's played four college football games. Three of those he's thrown for roughly 250 yards or more. Uh, he's run and, and escaped a lot of pressure. And then one of those games we didn't let him throw. <laughs> we ran the ball. The entire game. So really, the three games that we ran an offense that was balanced, he's thrown for over 250 yards as a true freshman. Two turnovers. Uh, one of those turnovers being the correct read, right? The other being a correct read, and the ball's a little high. Both the tight ends, 
right? So when you look at what Sam's done through four games of starting in college football, uh, you know, it's, it just depends on how you look at the picture. Because some people could look at that picture and say, oh my gosh, this dude's the superstar in the making. He's thrown for 250 in three of the games. They let him do it. He's only turned it over twice in four games. He evades. He scrambles. Then the other side is, you know, they flip it over. He's missed that throw. He's missed that throw. That's the beautiful thing about sports is beauty's in the eye, the eye of the beholder. And I think that's the definition when you're a young quarterback is people get to pick if you're playing really well or playing poorly a lot uh, when you're young because they – you know, they either lean in on your young or they lean in on your mistake. Just a, you know, the narrative's funny to me sometimes. Hey, Kenny, thanks for the Arizona family. You mentioned last week that Kansas you think was a couple plays away from possibly having your season look entirely different. It's probably easier to say that about a one in three team, but now that this team is running more, do you still feel that way? Oh, it still is that way. I mean, you look at week two. Uh, for them, and like I said, they throw a pick six in the in the end of the second quarter of the game when they have the ball with a lead, with about 50 seconds left on the 30 yard line on a now screen, completely changes the middle eight. The most important series of the game is that series because the opponent doesn't get the ball back to go score. So it's seven points without flipping of possessions, which is essentially a double turnover. Turning the ball over there and giving up seven points is essentially two turnovers because you lose a possession that you don't get back right at the end of the half. And that happened in that game and the UNLV, UNLV game, uh, which was seven points twice plus almost a double turnover because then you lose the, the middle eight at the end of the first half uh, piece of it. So you take away those two plays and they have two more wins in my opinion, right? And then you look at, uh, you know, last week and, you know, or the week prior and they're up 13 points with four minutes and 50 seconds left. Like, are you kidding me? Right? It's just, this, this is a good football team. And sometimes people can just look at the look at the uh, look at the record, and you can get skewed. But that is not accurate with this team. Yeah, and quick follow up to that: If they've had those double-digit leads the last two weeks, how do you feel like your team can necessarily take advantage of a team that has had those opportunities and has fallen short? Yeah, I think uh, I think sometimes, you know, you're just trying to figure out how to win, and sometimes it just doesn't go your way, and you do it just happens, right, over and over again. Uh, we've got to find a way to play good football for all four quarters because this isn't a team you run away from right this is a team that you know historically I mean I believe they won nine games last year if you include the bowl game they returned almost everybody right so this isn't like this team forgot how to play football this is a really good football team that two plays a game are not going their way but that's sports two plays flip the other direction and they're the 12th ranked team in the country, undefeated, and favorites to win the Big 12. Two plays don't go their way, and it's what happened, change everything. But I think the one thing about Coach Leopold is he's had a lot of success in his career. Uh, he knows how close they are. I don't expect any drastic change because anybody who watches them play knows if you're one or two plays away from being 5-0 and a, a game uh, or 4-1, and whatever you want to want to pick that they would be, right, then you're not going to make wholesale changes. You just got to try to not make those mistakes on those downs. And that's what they are. They're that close to still being the team that everybody projected them to be. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this team, they they want to run the ball and they want to stop the run. I mean, that's the identity. So I, I don't think they care if they give up intermediate passing game. I think that's why they're good on defense historically over a long period of time is if you can be that efficient in the intermediate passing game, which most college teams can't be, then do it. Like, I, I firmly believe that's a, a philosophy is make people be really, really efficient in an intermediate passing game, and most college teams struggle you know, throwing intermediate passing game consistently, right? It has to be almost an identity. So I don't think they really cared much for that. I think it is what it is. And they want to stop the run, run the football, uh, get the quarterback uncomfortable, whether that's four-man rush or whether that's five-man rushes. Uh, I think that's if you look at them, not just this year, but just historically in terms of what he believes in, what he talks about in press conferences, it's stopping the run and impacting the quarterback. I think those two things are the priority, not is this team going to throw a dig on second and six on us. I think that's the least of their worries.
big Kenny Damon already at Arizona Sports. With Kansas' run game and especially Devin Neal, they're, they're most effective going to the right on the outside. How do you, on defense, logistically try and drive them away from that? And um, how do you stop it in general? Yeah, obviously they've got two really good backs. They're good up front. Uh, schematically, they shift, they motion, they line up in so many formations to try to create numbers and to try to get your guys to play slower. That uh, that's why the running game is so effective. And then it's the identity of, of their team. You know, that's who they want to be. They want people to look at them and say, "We're going to run the ball at you, and everything's going to be off of the run." Uh, so we've got to be able to stop the run uh, while not giving up big plays at the same time, right? Which is which is like the. Uh, what is that, an oxymoron or something like that? Right. So that's the that's the fun part with playing a team that can run the ball is you've got to be able to stop the run but also not give up play action passes, not giving guys open on the naked game and all that stuff off of it. Um, got to stop the run. Those are two good backs. They're good up front. Uh, so we got to stop the run, bottom line. Yeah, they're both doing a really nice job, to be honest. I think both those guys have really bright futures here. Uh, I think getting LT back will be really good for us uh, at corner, getting him back, getting Tate back at linebacker for some rotation, rotational depth uh, will also help us. And then I think we need to play guys more. Uh, you know, last game we didn't, we didn't play a lot of guys, uh, especially in the back end. Uh, I think we just got to – to get guys reps, get guys in there, not just for this year, but for general, we got to get some of the our, our you know, we got to get some of those younger guys reps to play football. The only way to get better, you can practice, but you also got to get some game reps. So, not just for right now, but for the future of the program and where we're going, we got to get some of those younger safeties in the game a little bit more. Uh, the the Kamaris, the Montanas, we just got to get them in a little bit more to get their feet wet, get them comfortable, uh, and then also take some pressure off of. Uh, our back end, and same with LT with the corners. We got to make them not play 80 snaps. And luckily this week they won't have to do that based off the style of offense that we're seeing. You know they don't want to snap it 80 times. They'd much rather snap it 60, 58 times and have a 40-minute time of possession, right? A little bit different uh, philosophy than what we've seen the last three weeks. Yeah, hey, Coach Parker Bay with the Inferno Hotel. I know it's still early in the week, but it's your first Big 12 home game. What's your message to the ASU? Yeah, right now we're very, very close to a sellout. Very, very close to a sellout. So let's sell it out. You know, it's family weekend, which is awesome. Uh, Chick-fil-A is given out for, for uh, the student section who stays. The kids in the student section who stay for the entire game get free Chick-fil-A. So I think there's a, which is something our athletic department has been working on, trying to create perks to keep people in the stands, especially our students. So uh, I think we're very, very close to having an awesome environment. Uh, and I'll say this. I mean, if it's 106 degrees out and we have a sold out crowd, I mean, it's gonna be hot. You know, get comfortable with the person next to you. This fly keeps hitting me. Uh, but get comfortable with the person next to you. But uh, it'll be fun. That's all I'll say is at the end of the day, sports is a, a sport, it's entertainment for everybody that's not on the field. It's an entertainment piece, right? For us, it's life or death, essentially. But for everybody else, you're watching and you're either going to, you know, have a lot of fun that Saturday or not and then wake up and complain about it either way, right, is enjoy it. Whether it's hot, whether it's not hot, if it's sold out and we're loud and we're rocking, embrace it, enjoy it, have fun with it. First Big 12 game uh, at home. This should be a really, really fun game uh, to be out here at Mount America Stadium on Saturday. Not good. Uh, that's one of the categories. To be honest, that's our number one category of improvement that we got to get better at is our red zone stuff. Uh, both sides of the ball. So whenever both sides of the ball are failing, it's something that means we're probably not working it enough. Uh, you know, we're good in these other categories, and then there's one category both sides failing. That's probably not a player problem. It's probably a coaching problem, right? So we worked red zone uh, during the bye week uh, for really four different segments, uh, which is more than we normally work it. Uh, because we got to get better at that category. And when you're trying to win these games that you're winning the margins, uh, you got to win the margins in this league. Anybody can beat any team any week. You got to be more efficient in the red zone, holding them to three points, and we got to be more efficient in scoring touchdowns and not settling for field goals. Is 
Yeah, I mean, it's more the fact that we've got to be able to run the ball when we get in the low red zone. And then the fast, last few weeks, we've struggled rug, running the ball in the low red zone. Like, when you're on the minus 30 and you throw a shot on fourth down, everybody thinks you're a little bit crazy. But at the same token, if you convert a fourth and one on the minus 30, if a team's going to play you in zero and you have a chance to have a one-play touchdown, just because you convert your fourth and one on the 30 doesn't mean you're going to march down the field and score. So you, you can be more aggressive, right? Because if they're going to be max aggressive on the minus 30, you should match it. Right, you should you should balance it out. But when you get in the, the plus territory and you have three downs to get a yard, right? There's no there's nothing cute about that. You've got to find a way to convert those when you're in the red zone on second, third, and fourth down. It's not a cute down. It's a mentality down. And I think we haven't had we haven't played with that mentality good enough to win down there. And everything's off the run game when you get in the low red zone. Jordan, Kenny, there's been a lot of discussion this week, but it's been a growing trend the past couple of years of guys entering the portal to maintain their, their red shirt status. Um, what are your thoughts on that, and what adjustments do you need to make as a coaching staff to potentially prepare for that possibility? Yeah, I think now that the current day of college football, I mean, people can call it what they will, but at the end of the day, these kids are making money now doing it, and they that extends their ability to make money. I mean, it really does. I mean, if you're if you're making money doing it, and you can extend your year to make money again, uh, then and that's what they want to do. Then I have, you know, that's their own personal decision to do that. Uh, so I, I really don't have much comment on it, other than I think there's so much change in the sport, and it's going to continue to change. That anybody rushing to judgment on what's right or wrong in any capacity, right? You know, there's going to be more, and your opinion's going to change. And that's why I don't like to comment much on it because it's it's constantly changing. I don't think there is a right or wrong in the current landscape of college football with all the change. Nobody knows. Hey coach, you talked a lot about your aggressiveness. How do you use those deep shots uh, with Coach or with quarterback Levitt to kind of open up the rest of the offense, especially when Cam is having a difficulty finding open lanes? Yeah, obviously you have to be able to stretch the field vertically and horizontally. Uh, in order to run the football, right? And then even if you do that, right, if one defender beats one guy, well, then you're down a hat again, right? Because even if you play perfect offense, perfect offense, or almost perfect, obviously one-on-nones, right, schemed up touchdowns are perfect offense, but good offense is getting everybody blocked and you're running back on nobody or getting your running back on somebody eight yards away, 10 yards away, right? And so when you're scheming them up and you can create a safety or a nickel fitting from nine yards away from the entry of the run, and you're not at times blocking the guys you schematically can block, then that makes it really difficult to throw the shots, really difficult to throw the ball laterally, right? So then you've got to find different ways to still win those one-on-one -on -one blocks or maybe that you have to throw the ball more in those scenarios uh, which you're down a hat but I think that's really the key is if you can run the ball when your numbers are right football is easy if you can run the ball when your numbers are wrong football is really easy if you can't run the ball when your numbers are right to run it football gets extremely difficult and uh, I think it's really just as simple as that if we can run the ball with our numbers being correct even then everything else is going to open up. And if we can't, then everything else is going to get much tighter windows and you're going to lean on a quarterback more and you're going to have to just make more, quote-unquote, plays and tight window throws. Daniel? Obviously, the first two weeks, you guys were able to get fast starts and, you know, the last two, it's been a little bit slower. You know, 21 7 Texas State, not going to Texas Tech. Obviously, playing at no home and away is a big difference, but anything else that you kind of yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I think obviously home or away, I mean, the energy of the crowd does have an effect whether we like it or not. I do think there's a little bit of effect. Hopefully that can, we can get used to that the next time we go on the road. It doesn't have as much of an effect. But you also forget Texas State, we got to stop and scored. And we scored our, or we scored our first drive. So it wasn't like, you know, we started that completely horribly. We just went into a lull there. It wasn't like the opening series was bad. The opening series was only really bad uh, this last week for both sides of the ball. That was our first time that we've really started both sides of the ball really poorly, uh, all three phases really poorly. So uh, I just think we got to get back to early in games, 
worrying about us, keeping the emotions high because you have to play this game with high level of passion and emotion, but it has to be controlled. And I think at times the last few weeks, we've been a lot more bite or bark than we have bite. We've been a lot of, oh, have you seen our tape? We play really, really hard and physical. And we've talked about that more than we've actually played like that. And I think we got to get back to being that team that just plays extremely, extremely hard, that coaches talk about it. And I told the team today, you know, the first two weeks, or the week two and week three opponents, their coach went to their press conference and talked about how hard we play. When they got asked the question about, uh, what do you think about ASU? They said, well, they play really hard. They run the ball, they play hard. The last two coaches have not said anything about how hard we play. That tells us everything we know about how we've let that slip away and we got to get back to that. I don't think when you lose, you have to refocus. I think it's like, let's go. Like, we've been sitting on this L for a week now. We couldn't play this week. We had to watch other teams play. Like, let's play the game. Let's get back, do this. We got to get this right. We have to right the ship here. And I think that's kind of the, the guy's mentality. Now, it's easy to say, right? It's hard to go out there and work really hard all week. It's hard to go prepare really hard all week and then play the game really hard. Like it sounds so easy, just play hard, right? That's what, such an easy thought process. But the reality is the most teams are average because that's the definition of average. Definitely, like if everybody plays at an average level, which is the definition of average, then you have to do things better to not play at an average level. And that right there is difficult. And everybody thinks they can just flip the switch and, oh, why does this team play so hard? Well, we'll just play hard and match it. It's not how it works. It's a habit, and we got to get back to being the habit that we were in week one and two this week in practice. Do you feel like there have been any leaders that have kind of taken responsibility on making sure the guys are keeping that standard high when it comes to being above the average? Yeah, I think our entire, uh, you know, a lot of our leadership council, X and Shamari, and uh, I mean, CJ Fight plays hard every single snap. I mean, I would, I'd be shocked. I don't have his specific uh, loafs in front of me, but if it's more than two on the entire year, I would be absolutely shocked because that dude plays the game. I mean, you're at the end of the game and they're running, they're taking a knee and he's trying to swipe the ball out. We coach it, dive and swipe. Like the game's not over, like we're not gonna hit you, but like we're gonna try to do anything we can to get it back and he's still doing it. And I mean, that's the type of kid he is. And I think, uh, I think we have Leaf as another guy who just plays really, really hard. I think we got a bunch of guys that, uh, that play like that. And hopefully we can get our team playing like that again. Last couple of questions, Max and Jordan. Hey, Coach, obviously, over here. Coach, Hi. Obviously, you're focused on this week and this game, and your mind's probably not anywhere else. But for nope. a lot of people across the Valley uh, who are obviously anxious, and here's their day, Max and the Birds, my next question, are we eliminated from the process of the day? What are your initial thoughts on that? I'm not going to lie, I have no clue that that's happening. <laughs> I I really don't. Uh, I live in. I mean, sometimes obviously I'll, I'll get outside of my bubble, but I'm. I know nothing really. It's bad. I don't know much about what's going on outside of the bubble that I'm in right now. And they're right here. And I grew up a fan. And I went to games last year during our bye week. But this year, uh, yeah, I I've been so focused on this football team. I I couldn't even help you. I don't really have a favorite interaction or memorable interaction with him. I wish I could. I just remember watching him uh, when I was the offense coordinator at Chaparral High School and uh, watching him play at Utah. I remember that game and I remember how he played and how our, the D-line played in that game. Uh, and that was like a kind of a memory uh, I had from him playing football here was that game. See you all later. Thank you. Thank you.